Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. Later in the program, how to prepare for managing student debt and loan repayment. First, interest rates, inflation, the housing crunch, so much of our financial stability is shaped by the policies of the Federal Reserve. Our Todd Kaskiewicz sits down with the new president of the Boston Fed as she takes on the issues facing our economy while making history. Most people don't have a good sense of the breadth of the work that the Federal Reserve does. Economist Dr. Susan Collins just finished her first year as president and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Inflation is much too high and the toll that that inflation takes is really significant. She says her policy making relies on not just economic data, but also what she learns from talking with people around New England. We were with President Collins last month as she visited Springfield and took a walking tour of Holyoke with Mayor Joshua Garcia and local leaders. Do you think that a recession is inevitable at this point or is a soft landing still possible? My baseline is that we can bring inflation down through slowing the economy, but without requiring a significant downturn because of the amount of resilience we're seeing in the economy. While the unemployment rate in Massachusetts remains nearly one point lower than the national average, the labor participation rate, which is a reading of how many eligible workers are working or looking for a job, remains below pre-pandemic levels. Dr. Collins says the lack of affordable child care remains one reason why some workers have not re-entered the workforce. Boston is home to one of the 12 Federal Reserve Banks around the country. And as head of the bank, President Collins is a member of the Federal Open Market Committee, led by Fed Chair Jerome Powell. The FOMC sets monetary policy for the central bank, including making critical decisions that impact the interest rates that consumers and businesses are charged. Do you think that we will see the end of the rate hikes this year? My expectation is that we will need to hold rates at a level that will help us to slow demand and realign demand and supply um, for some time. And so my baseline is that we will need to hold at least through this year and that we'll start to bring rates down next year. We also asked about one challenge hitting Massachusetts particularly hard, the lack of affordable long-term housing. How does the Fed balance those com seemingly competing interests of encouraging investment in housing and at the same time trying to slow down the economy? It is true that raising interest rates has implications for the trajectory of housing construction, for you know housing sales and all of that. Of course, we recognize that. At the same time, our dual mandate from Congress is price stability and maximum employment. And as I had said, bringing inflation down is really job one because of the toll that it's taking. While the job is still new for President Collins, Greater Boston is not. She earned her undergraduate degree in economics at Harvard and her PhD at MIT. Collins is a naturalized U.S. citizen of Jamaican descent, born in Scotland and raised in New York City. She's a wife, mother, and now history-making matriarch, the first woman of color in this high-profile job. It's a phenomenal role, a phenomenal opportunity that I would be the first black woman president of a Federal Reserve Bank. I saw that as a huge privilege, responsibility. The work we do is really important. Susan Collins is an influential voice in banking, as is Terry Williams. She's the president and COO of One United Bank. It's the nation's largest black-owned bank and the first black digital bank. Thank you for joining us. I want to make note that you also went to Harvard yes, uh, Business yes, School. I did. Thanks. Terry, thank you for being yeah, here. Thank you so for One United me. Bank is a community development bank. How is that different from other big-name banks? Yes. So we're what's called a CDFI, a Community Development Financial Institution, and what that means is that our focus is on lending in low to moderate income communities. Mm -hmm. So whereas banks in general tend to lend in all communities, but a lot of you know, moderate, middle, and upper communities, our focus is on low to moderate. So how is the bank helping to close the racial wealth gap? Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, first of all, Thank you for this topic because um, one of the ways that we're working to close it is making people aware of it and aware that we really do need to take action. And the action can be anything. For us, it's increasing financial literacy, job one, you know, really getting our community to figure out 
what do you need to do to close the wealth gap for your family? Mm -hmm. And then providing them with the means to do so, you know, whether that's savings, whether that's a home loan, you know, looking at their, their family and saying, what are the things that can help you close the wealth gap for your family? What are some of those things? Yeah. Yep. So we have something called one transaction. Mm -hmm. And what we say is that there's six things that you can do to close the wealth gap for, for anyone actually. One of them is savings and investment, setting up an automatic savings plan so that the money doesn't go in your pocket, but actually goes into your bank account before it goes in, you know, to your pocket. And the second is, uh, the second uh, transaction is home ownership. Mm -hmm. You know, the biggest difference between black and white wealth is home equity. Mm -hmm. So owning a home, you know, third is insurance. Mm -hmm. You know, life insurance. Mm -hmm. um, you can look at your parents or your grandparents or all your family members, you know, having life insurance for yourself. The fourth is a will. Mm -hmm. You know, we find that only about 20 to 30 percent of people have a will when I always say 100 percent of us are going to die. Yeah, right, that, that's right. And if you so. don't have a will, sometimes your property, if you have it, goes back into probate. Exactly. Your, your uh, descendants may not uh, have a chance to inherit it. Right. Lots of complications. A lot of complications. And you don't have to have an estate to need a will. Okay. Everyone really should have a will. All right. um, mm -hmm. So there's six. The, the other one is credit score. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we help with. We have a secured card, helps people rebuild their credit score. And then there's also having a profitable business. Some people are business owners. Other people prefer you know, to work for companies. But having a profitable business can also help close the right, racial wealth gap. Um, talk about how um, One United Bank is uh, working to protect black Americans from predatory lenders. Yeah. We actually just introduced a, a alternative to payday loans because that's one of the ways that we are getting scammed. Um, and it really is preying on people that can least afford it. So we offer a short-term small dollar loan program called Cash Please that literally, you don't, you don't have, we don't check your credit score and you can have the money deposited into your account in four hours. Mm. And then it gets paid back over a 90 day period. So very similar to a, a um, payday loan, mm -hmm. um, but without the 400% interest rate and all the fees, um, our rate because is actually- Because those fees eat up into you know, that base amount of money. Yes, and the interest rates as well. So whereas our interest rate is about 20%, Payday loans are 400%. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're doing is trying to figure out what we as a bank can do to offer alternatives to so that people can avoid predatory loans. Now, Terry, how did you become a banker? You know, mm -hmm. it's a very competitive field. Mm -hmm. um, um, what led you down this path? Yeah. And, and talk about some of the barrier breaking as mm -hmm. a woman of color. Yeah, yeah. So I realized really in my older age um, that I am inspired by my great grandmother. Hmm. She owned um, what's called a juke joint. I don't know if you know what that is. Yeah, but, uh, I know what it is. Yeah, okay, <laughs> a, a barbecue pit, a candy store. She owned real estate. And I used to follow her around. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when I realized that I would like business. And so when I got to school, I majored. I went, went to Brown. I majored in economics. I went to Harvard Business School. Um, and then I went into, I worked for Bank of America, worked for American Express. But then I realized that I really wanted to focus on the black community. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to figure out how I can educate kids that were like me that really saw money but didn't, couldn't connect the dots. But what, what, what was it about Ma Honey mm. um, that made you want to get into the financial field? Yeah, I think there was, first of all, the whole idea of business was not a negative. And that's what I got from her. In mm -hmm. fact, it was a positive. So it was about it was about starting business, understanding business, and, and ensuring that that business helped the community. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. whereas I didn't look at it as oh you can you know make all this money and you know be mm -hmm. rich, it was more you can use the resources that you get from business to help the community. Terry, we're almost out of time, but I got to get to this. You wrote a book about financial literacy for urban youth. It's called I Got Bank. Yeah. My granddad taught me about money. Uh, so what are some of the key points? quickly. Mm -hmm. Save, save, save. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of says it all, yeah, doesn't it? it says it all. All right. Terry Williams, President and Chief Operating Officer of One United Bank. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Up next, the impact of the Supreme Court's decision on affirmative action, the potential impact beyond college campuses when CityLine continues.